Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Jeffrey Epstein Show. I'm your host, Bobby Capucci, and this is Daily Drop number 190. Earlier today, we talked a little bit about the building that Mark Epstein, Jeffrey Epstein's brother, supposedly owns on 66th Street in New York. And within that building, we talked a little bit about how the modeling agency, MC2, which Jeffrey Epstein provided the seed money to start up with Jean-Luc Brunel, well, they also had some apartments there and an office. Now, I thought that we would add a little more context to the MC2 angle and talk a little bit more about their connection to some of the players within the retail world and some of the uh, bigger companies that worked with them to provide them models. And we're not talking about just before Jeffrey Epstein was arrested, folks. We're talking about after. And it doesn't take more than a very basic Google search of Jeffrey Epstein and Jean-Luc Brunel to understand the sort of people you're doing business with. And my question is, why would these people be involved with any sort of business ties with a company like MC2 that has such close connections to Jeffrey Epstein? I mean, he, he started the company with the seed money with Brunel. So of all the modeling agencies out there, why would these big retailers continue to use a company like MC2? It boggles my mind, and nobody can ever answer those kinds of questions, right? These companies that we're going to talk about, they never return emails. They never talk about what went on. They just figure if they ignore it, that it'll all go away, and people will, you know, they'll lose uh, interest in it, and they'll, they'll stop asking questions. And I guess that's how it works with some of these outlets in the legacy media, right? The 24-hour news cycle, they got to have something, so, you know, something every night for them to run that's going to, you know, be a headline grabber. And getting down into the context of these sort of stories and down into the actual weeds to learn all of the facts, it doesn't uh, resonate with the resonate with these um, outlets a lot of times. You know, they do drive-by coverage and they leave it up to us, the audience or independent content creators, to chase down the rest of the story, to figure out the context, to fig figure out the nuance of it. And so that's what we're going to do tonight. We're going to add a little more context to MC2, and we're going to talk about just how prevalent they were working with some of the biggest retailers in the business. This article was published by Business, uh, business Insider, and the headline is, Major Retailers Including Nordstrom, Macy's, and J.C. Penney's reportedly joined Vict Victoria's Secret in using a modeling agency with ties to Jeffrey Epstein. This article was published by Bethany Biron, and it came out on August 19th, 2019. It's a good question. Why would these retailers do business with an agency that has ties to Epstein? And it's not like Epstein was operating completely in the dark, where nobody knew who he was, or had any idea that he was involved with MC2 or Jean-Luc Brunel. It wasn't like people didn't know that. So how could they possibly use that excuse? Oh, we didn't know what he was involved in, or we had no idea the scope of the crimes. It's such a cop-out. It's such BS. And all of these companies that were involved with these people, they should be called out on that. That shouldn't be allowed to fly, because it's a cop-out and it's BS. In the wake of Jeffrey Epstein's death, discoveries of his wide-ranging ties to the retail industry only continue to grow. And again, I don't know how much of a discovery it was, right? How can people not know that Jeffrey Epstein and Jean-Luc Brunel were very tight and they were close, they were business associates, and that Epstein seeded the, the original million dollars to get this company off the ground? How do people not know that? A basic Google search will show you that. Hi. All of these companies, they're not wise enough to do some basic research on people they're going into business with, people that are going to represent their brand. You're telling me they're not that smart? Well, if that's the case, then it's no wonder that all of these uh, brick-and-mortar retailers are going out of business. Because if they can't figure out that Jeffrey Epstein's a scumbag and Jean-Luc Brunel is no better, well, I, I, don't, I don't know how they're going to balance a budget. Bloomberg reported on Monday that MC2 Model Management, the modeling agency accused of, su of supplying underage women to Epstein's alleged sex trafficking operation, worked with several major retailers beyond Victoria's Secret. And, you know, it's par for the course. 
anyone who thinks that Jeffrey Epstein didn't have ties with, to all of these people, they're being very naive. Anybody who was a power player in New York City, at the very least, bumped shoulders with Epstein at some point. He was ensconced in those circles. He was always around the polite society crowd that I'm always talking about. He was always always around those kinds of people. So the executives who work for these companies, you mean to tell me that these executives have no idea what sort of animal Jean-Luc Brunel is or the sort of animal Jeffrey Epstein was? Considering during the 80s there was a special run in the United States about Jean-Luc Brunel raping models. So you're going to tell me that nobody had the 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 good sense to do some research into the people that you're going into business with. It's either that you're too inept to even do basic research or you knew the, the score and you just didn't care. According to a letter sent to Bloomberg by Brunel's business partner, Jeff Fuller, MC2's client roster also included Nordstrom, Macy's, Saks Fifth Avenue, Neiman Marcus, J.C. Penney, Kohl's, Target, Sears, and Belk. Fuller said he had warned MC2 owner Jean-Luc Brunel about Brunel's ties to Epstein, writing in the letter that he told Brunel in 2014 that he had received a tremendous amount of worry from our clients. Just about Epstein, though? Come on. That's ridiculous. Again, I just said that Brunel was accused of rape on American television on, I forget what it was, Dateline or Primetime TV, whatever the, the show was in the 80s. It's, it escapes my mind right now. But he was accused on that show of raping models. He's been accused of all sorts of disgusting acts throughout his whole entire career as a modeling scout. And for for his uh, 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 partner here, Mr. Fuller, to say, oh, well, I warned him about the ties to Epstein. Well, what about your ties to Brunel and Brunel being an epic scumbag as well? So, uh, you know, it's uh, pretty gross any way you chop it. Here's an idea. You shouldn't be involved with anyone like John Luke Brunel or Jeffrey Epstein in any capacity, personal or business related. Brunel's connection to Epstein stems from at least 2002 when flight logs show Brunel flew from Florida to the Bahamas on Epstein's private plane. Brunel also reportedly visited Epstein in jail while the, while the, while the pedophile was serving a 13-month sentence for his involvement in an underage prostitution case in 2008. Again, I must point out, underage Girls cannot be prostitutes, okay? Why the why these articles wrote, would write these write these pieces like that is beyond me. And you see a lot of a lot more of it back in the beginning of the case when these uh, articles were first coming out. You see them use that kind of language a lot more than they do now. So at least it's a step in the right direction. But it always bothers me when I see that uh, pr uh, underage prostitution. There's zero chance that that can occur, okay? And as far as uh, Brunel goes, visiting Jeffrey Epstein while he was in jail, not only that, there's all sorts of talk that he was living inside Jeffrey Epstein's Palm Beach mansion while Epstein was in the Huskow. So, again, I find it ridiculous that these huge, gigantic corporations that background check their employees even, didn't have the good sense to background check people they were getting into business with. Really what it comes down to, and in my opinion what it is, they don't care. The end of the day, money makes the world go round, and being being involved with somebody like Epstein and Brunel, if that can elevate your brand, or you can get models cheaper, or whatever it may be, hey, go for it. That's all these executives care about. These people don't care about you or I. These are these are the robber barons that I'm talking about. These dudes are funding our feudal lords, aka our politicians, and everybody's just okay with it. Everybody, you know, everybody's walking around, head in the clouds, no big deal. And it was like that for a long time because the media was gaslighting the hell out of everybody. The media was continuously running all kinds of BS narratives. And now that people can connect with each other and they can get news from other places, that stuff is over, right? Nobody's falling for their BS anymore. It's not clear how extensively or for how long the retailers worked with MC2, but the connections draw fresh scrutiny to the relationship retailers have with the modeling industry, which is largely unregulated, Bloomberg wrote. 
we've uh, talked about that in some uh, previous articles as well. There's like zero regulation within that industry. And I'm certainly not some sort of expert on the fashion industry or the modeling industry, but there needs to be some sort of oversight and some sort of regulation that provides some protection for these young girls. These are very vulnerable young girls, right? They're already wearing skimpy clothing in some aspects, you know, doing swimsuit modeling or whatever it may be. And they're, they're being vulnerable in that regard. And they're also vulnerable to these sick-ass predators like Brunel. So there has to be some sort of oversight, in my opinion, especially with underage girls, like a parent on set all times. I don't know. Whatever it may be, there's people smarter than me that can come up with that. But in my opinion, there has to be some sort of oversight with these modeling agencies. Retailers often work with several modeling agencies using a casting director to determine who to book for fashion shows, catalog shoots, and other projects. I think that would be pretty interesting to find out just exactly who the casting director is for MC2 or was for MC2 during all of this. I'm going to look into that and see what I can come up with. Further, Bloomberg reported that a Nordstrom executive was involved in sponsoring Brunel's application for an O-1 visa. Isn't that nice? Well, there you go. There's your tie. So you're telling me this lady sponsored Brunel, right? This executive sponsors Brunel. And she has no idea who he is, what he's up to, what, he, what he's been accused of in the past, what he's still doing, the company he keeps. She had no idea, huh? Pretty interesting. According to the U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services, this work permit is granted to the individual who possesses extraordinary ability in the sciences, arts, education, business, or athletics, or who has demonstrated record of extraordinary achievement in the motion picture or television industry and has been recognized nationally or internationally for those achievements. I mean, really? This is who you sponsor? Nordstrom executive? This is who you step out onto the ledge for? This is who you vouch for? It's, I mean, it's unbelievable. So she's going to come forward and, and vouch for this, this clown when everybody knows who he is. And then MC2 is also going to get business from Nordstrom's where this person sits on the board. I mean, come on. According to Bloomberg, Nordstrom last worked with MC2 in January 2017, though the retailer declined to comment for the story. Of course they didn't comment. They know that they look like garbage in this, in this instance. They know that working with Jeffrey Epstein's partner all the way up till 2017 is not a good look. So they'll just, they'll just keep quiet. They'll just be silent about everything. And they'll try and wait it out, like I said. Meanwhile, everybody understands, everybody knows that these retailers, these executives, these board members, they don't care about the rest of us. They don't care about nothing but increasing their power and making more money. It's pathetic, honestly. Look, I'm not somebody that knocks people for success. I think that the the fact that all of us in the United States of America especially are able to chase their dreams whichever way they want, and then if you succeed, you're able to cash in on those dreams. I think that's a good thing. But at what point do you get rid of your moral compass in in in, in uh in place of greed? Right? Where do you trade your, your moral compass for greed? You see, you see it time and time again in these stories we talk about with these executives, these billionaires, and it's just, it's gross. It's just so gross. I'm just skeptical. I, at this point, if you're part of New York's so-called polite society and you're super rich, I am absolutely skeptical of who you are. And I believe that the onus is on you to prove you're not a scumbag at this point. Because everything we have read leading up to this point, all of the articles that the, and mind you, these are the articles that the mainstream outlets are producing that we read on the podcast. We're not searching out some sort of obscure article on InfoWars or some other crazy ass site. We don't do that here, right? So we're using their own articles. And, you know, it's, it's crazy to see. It's just crazy to see how this whole thing has unfolded as we've covered it. Business Insider did not immediately re receive responses to requests for comment from Nordstrom's, Macy's, Saks Fifth Avenue, Neiman Marcus, JCPenney, Kohl's, Target, Sears, and Belk. 
Yeah, again, like the like I said a second ago, there's no way they're going to answer because they know they're going to look bad. It's a bad look for them, and they want nothing to do with looking that terrible. It, the optics are already bad, but if you open your mouth, you just make things much worse. Just ask Prince Andrew, a.k.a. the Joe Exotic of the Windsor family, how that worked out for him. Victoria's Secret has already been embroiled in controversy after news arose that L Brand CEO X. CEO, boy, it feels good to say that, huh? Les Wexner had ties to Epstein and had formerly employed the pedophile as his money manager. Though Wexner claims to have severed ties with Epstein 12 years ago, Victoria's Secret continued to use MC2 models for in its, in its 2015 fashion show as well in catalog and website photography. Oh, I bet you that would be an interesting look for uh, a forensic accountant, huh? How much of that money funneled back to Jeffrey Epstein? How much of that money was washed? How much of that money was legit? How much of that money was taxed? How much of that money can be traced back to good old Les Wexner, him and his wife and their charities and all of the other nonsense that Jeffrey Epstein was involved in? How much of this money can be traced back there? Because like I told you several times now, if you trace the drugs, you find the drug dealer. If you trace the money, you find the distributor and whoever else is involved at the top. And the same works here. You got to follow that money. Follow the money. And if you follow the money, you're going to eventually come to a place where you're going to expose the whole entire thing. If you'd like to contact me, you could do that at Bobby Capucci at protonmail.com. That's B O B B Y C A P U C C I at protonmail.com. You can also find me on Twitter at B O B B Y C A P U C C I. Oh, excuse me. That's B O B B Y underscore C A P U C C I. All right, folks, until tomorrow, I hope everybody has a great evening.